It's a really neat way to this, do this question, and it is to consider the percentage answered incorrectly. So if 90% answered the first question correctly, then 10% were incorrect. For question two, 80% were correct, so 20% incorrect. And then question three, 30%. So we want to know the smallest possible percentage of students who answered all three questions correctly. So actually that means find the maximum um, percentage of people who answered, uh, who got at least one question wrong actually, who answered at least one question wrong. And that is going to be when there's no overlap. So these 10% then got all the other questions correct. These 30% got all the other questions correct. So it's going to be 60%. Maximum percentage of people who answered at least one question incorrectly will be 60%. And therefore the smallest possible percentage who answered all three questions correctly is going to be 40%. That's a pretty solid method. I actually didn't use that. I did it a kind of a longer way, which I'm going to share with you now. So I split it up into different percentages of people to make sure I covered the 90 and the 80 and so on. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Ten. And then here's question one, question two, question three. And then I imagine trying to spread it out so that basically I was minimizing the number who got three correct. So let's just say that if question one, if 90% got it correct, then let's take all these people here. Um, these 10 got it wrong. Okay, for question two, I want a different, uh, I want 80% to get it correct, but I can't, because I want to minimize people getting it, or all three correct, I'm going to now let these people um, get it right and then these 10% get this question wrong. Okay, and then they must have got those right. So you can see I'm kind of bring, I'm uh, ruling out you know, these people from getting all three correct. Right, then question three, I'm gonna do the same sort of thing again. Well, I might as well let these people get it right because they've already got one wrong. Okay, so now it's 70%, so I'm gonna put in the these people getting it wrong. And that means uh, I've got to have these correct. So now these sections of 10% of people got them wrong. And so you can see visually from this that the minimum is going to be 40% uh, getting all three questions correct. So I've, I've kind of drawn a diagram, made an argument about it verbally, but um, you know I think this is a pretty solid method. First way is like a bit clearer, you know, how do I know I definitely can't get any um, any lower than that? I Hopefully I've, I've, you feel like I've argued it correctly, but yeah, that gives us the answer of 40%.